How much information do you actually need to fully specify the identity of a chemical substance? This was a question that intrigued the chemists of old. And of course, we started with the things we could know. One of the first things we could know was the empirical formula of a compound. Then came the molecular formula. Is knowing the molecular formula enough to know what a compound is? So it turns out the answer is no. There are different compounds with the same chemical formula that are nonetheless different in their properties, their reactions, all that kind of thing. And this led to the concept of isomerism, the idea of two substances with some properties in common, but other properties different. And most generally, isomers are substances that have the same chemical formula, but different arrangements of atoms in some way. And this gives rise to different physical and chemical properties of these substances. Isomerism is important in coordination chemistry because there are different ways ligands can bind to metal centers. So we can have complexes that have the same collections of atoms, even the same collections of ligands, that nonetheless have different structures and different properties as a result. So it's a great context to begin exploring this idea that chemical substances can have some properties in common and some different. And isomerism is just a fascinating concept in general, in my view. There are isomers that are very, very, very similar to each other, in particular uh, from what's on the slide. Enantiomers are about as similar as two chemical substances can get while still being different. There are other isomers that are very, very different from each other. For example, linkage isomers in a coordination chemistry context can have extremely different physical properties. All right, we're going to look here at two different types of, of uh, isomers, structural or constitutional isomers and what are called stereoisomers or spatial isomers. Structural or constitutional isomers have different connectivity of their atoms. So they have the same chemical formula, the same numbers and types of atoms in the molecular or empirical formula, but those atoms are connected in different ways. And we'll look at two specific classes in this unit coordination isomers and linkage isomers. Stereoisomers have the same bonds arranged in a different way in three-dimensional space. So same numbers and types of atoms, the same chemical linkages, but those linkages are arranged in different ways in three-dimensional space. And there are two classes of stereoisomers that are important to us. Enantiomers are stereoisomers that are mirror images. They're also known as optical isomers. You'll hear me use both terms, although enantiomer is a term that you'll hear throughout your organic chemistry courses as well. Diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not mirror images, and there are pretty much an infinite array of possible diastereomers. We'll focus in particular on geometric or cis-trans isomers in this course, which differ in a very specific way and are not related as mirror images. And we'll see why the whole mirror image idea matters a little bit later. We're going to begin by looking at the two types of structural or constitutional isomers, since these are easier to understand in that we can just think in two dimensions. We can readily just think and draw on paper without thinking in three dimensions to understand constitutional or structural isomers. And the first type we're going to look at on this slide is known as a linkage isomer. And this is peculiar to coordination compounds containing ligands with multiple possible donor atoms that could bind the metal center. So we've got multiple binding points, so the ligand might be monodentate, but can only bind through one atom or the other. Consider the cyanide ligand, which contains a carbon and a nitrogen, each of which has a lone pair. The typical binding mode for cyanide is through the carbon. Carbon is less electronegative, it's more Lewis basic than nitrogen. Carbon tends to give its lone pair away in a dative bond more readily than nitrogen. However, we could imagine turning the ligand around and if we turn the ligand around and point the nitrogen toward the metal center, well, now the nitrogen is acting as the Lewis space. And this is not the same structure. This is not the same structure as this. They have different connectivity. The nitrogen metal bond is not the same as the carbon metal bond. So these are structural isomers. And they're what we call linkage isomers, since there's a difference in the linkage, the metal, non-metal linkage within the complex. Another example is shown here. Here we have a thiocyanate ligand, SCN, bound two different ways to a cobalt center. 
In the left-hand case, we've got that sulfur bonded, and commonly you'll see the, the atom that actually binds to the metal center is bolded or underlined to show that that is actually linked to the metal center. This can be easy to lose in a textual formula like this. And in the right-hand case, we have the nitrogen bound to the metal center. So as in the cyanide case above, we sort of turn the ligand around to generate these isomers. So here's a structure of the first isomer. I've kind of lumped the five ammonia ligands into a formula on the left, and we see here the dative bond between cobalt and sulfur, which is actually binding the metal center. In the linkage isomer, the nitrogen is now binding the metal center. We've just turned the ligand around, and notice the nitrogen has a lone pair, so it can bind the metal center, just like the sulfur, but this is an isomer of this. These are not the same. They contain a different metal-nonmetal -metal linkage, a different dative bond, right? Sulfur cobalt here, nitrogen cobalt there. So these linkage isomers tend to have very, very different properties, right? The, the different bond means that they react in different ways. They have different solubilities, different reactivity, different physical properties pretty much across the board. The difference in linkage isomers is inside the primary coordination sphere inside the brackets. There's an actual structural difference inside the complex ion, and if the complex ion is charged, the counter ions may be exactly the same. So for example, both of these complexes could have, for instance, two bromide anions as counter ions in coordination compounds. This brings us to the second type of isomerism, structural isomerism in coordination compounds, which is known as ionization or coordination isomerism. Ionization isomers differ in the ligands in the primary coordination sphere. In essence, a counter ion that is in the secondary coordination sphere comes in and kicks out a ligand from the primary to the secondary coordination sphere. And so we can interconvert them by imagining losing a ligand from inside the square brackets and putting it out as a counter ion. This is obviously relevant with charged ligands, primarily with anionic ligands, and taking one of those anions that's originally in the secondary coordination sphere and putting it into the primary coordination sphere inside the square brackets. Here's an example of this. And I actually want you to pause the video now and make sure you can spot the difference between these two complexes. They have the same molecular formula. They have the same numbers and types of atoms, but they are different. All right, did you spot the difference? The compound on the left has a bromide counter ion and a chloride ligand. The compound on the right has a chloride counter ion and a bromide ligand. Put another way, chlorine is inside the primary coordination sphere in this compound on the left and bromide in the secondary coordination sphere. In the compound on the right, bromide is inside the primary coordination sphere and chloride is in the secondary coordination sphere. So what's happened here, if we think about converting this compound on the left to the compound on the right, for example, is we've brought bromide in and we have kicked chloride out of the primary coordination sphere. And this is how ionization or coordination isomers differ. And again, like linkage isomers, they contain different bonds, different dative bonds. We've got a cobalt chlorine dative bond here, cobalt bromine dative bond here. And so these will have very different properties, both physical and chemical properties.